Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome to the expert guide to Quick Controls in Cubase. I recently made a basic guide in which I covered all of the essential or fundamental information you need to know in order to use Quick Controls. And I'll put a link above and in the description below in case either you haven't seen that video or you need a refresher on Quick Controls generally. Today, we're going to have a look at some of the more advanced subjects. Hope you enjoy this one today. Check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. Uh, it's an awesome way to help support my channel so that I can carry on making these videos. Okay, then let's have a look at the lay of the land. We have an instance of an Archuria CS80. I've used this instrument because it has lots of controls. It's a fixed interface. What you see is what you get, but you get a lot. As you can see, there's a lot going on there. I've also configured some VST quick controls for this instrument. In the VST I panel, over on the right hand side, I know that my head's obscuring most of it. That's why I've created a couple of unused tracks so that you can see this for today's purposes. This is the track instrument representing the instance of the CS80. And if we right click on that and open the remote control editor, this is where we configure VST quick controls. They're configured in banks of eight controls, as you can see, and you can create many different pages. If I scroll down, you can see lots of different collections of eight controls. Now I've configured 32 controls in this CS80 for today's purposes. So the first four pages are populated hand built by me mapping controls into the instrument. Let's have a look at how we do that. So here's the remote control editor. You're gonna need both of these windows open together. And in the top right hand corner, we can activate learn mode. Just press the L button. And now for each control that we select, you can see that I'm single clicking on these controls. Here's the detune knob. Let's set it to something else so that I can show you what to do. I'm just gonna click any old control in the instrument and it's been set. It's been mapped into that instrument, into that uh, control. Now I wanted detune, which is over here on the left hand side. So if I click the detune control, that's been mapped properly again. So you literally just select each control and then click the corresponding control in the instrument. And that's that mapping done. As long as the instrument is automation enabled and Archuria instruments are, you're gonna get a very tight relationship between this mapping. It's not just the word pan. As you'll see later, there's a very deep understanding on Cubase's part of exactly what's going on here. Just a quick other note about this remote control editor. It's possible to configure optional left and right buttons as well. Just to the right of where it says this layout control, we have a setup cell layout and I have all of the optional controls disabled. See these switches, left and right switches, you can add extra controls. But since I'm trying to map this into quick controls and we just want sets of eight commands, I'm not interested in any optional extra stuff. So I've disabled all of those. Okay, so I've created four pages of eight controls. I'm gonna use these today to demonstrate what VST quick controls bring to the party. They do have this extra level of power over the top of track quick controls, which is my default preferred method of operation. VST quick controls allow you to have these collections as you'll see shortly. Once you've finished all of your mapping, you come out of learn mode, you'll click the apply button which locks all of those controls into memory. And this is system wide. So now every time you load an instance of a CS80 on your system, all of this information is gonna be recalled. Okay, how are we gonna use all of that information? Well, as a branch at this point, we need to make a decision. Are we going to exclusively use VST quick controls or are we gonna rely on track quick controls which have the advantage of being visible in the left-hand inspector? So just for now, let's stick with track quick controls and see how much value we can squeeze out of these configuration panels, these, these collections of eight controls that we've just created. Now by default, the track quick controls don't have anything to do with VST quick controls, but they can be made to do so very easily. I'm gonna single click on the instrument track and then say get default QCs from plugin. These eight values that have just been brought across are page one of what we've just configured. Let's reopen the remote control editor, master volume, detune, pan, there you go. This is a problem with instrument tracks that we're gonna subvert by adding a MIDI track to our configuration. 
just to show you what the issue is. If the instrument isn't multi-timbral, the CS80 isn't, it only contains a single instrument, you don't have access to anything beyond page one. I can't access those other controls. So on page two, for instance, I want to look at the high pass filter cutoff and resonance. I can't get to them. There's no way for me to choose page two from the instrument. If I create a MIDI track, however, I can. And the way that I do it is very straightforward. I set the MIDI track to the MIDI channel corresponding to the page number. Believe it or not, there's a direct correlation between MIDI channel and page number in the VST Quick Controls. So this MIDI track, which is routed to the CS80, is now communicating on MIDI channel 2. When I get default QCs, what do you know? Cut off and resonance, there we are. So we've just brought across page 2 from the VST Quick Controls. This is kind of secret information. You don't find this anywhere in the manual. You have to kind of stumble across it accidentally. If you had a multi-timbral instrument, such as Halion, you can configure individual slots inside Halion to communicate on different MIDI channels. And then you can get this functionality inside a single instance of an instrument track, but it's really dependent on the instrument being multi-timbral. MIDI tracks circumvent that requirement. And so this is a global, a ubiquitous rule. You can use MIDI tracks for any kind of instrument, regardless of whether it's multi-timbral and it's gonna work. Just to prove that that's gonna work, I'll open the instrument. Here's high pass filter cutoff, which is this control I'm circling with my mouse. With the MIDI track selected, I move the corresponding mapped control on my keyboard, and there's the HPF going up and down. If I select the instrument, we're back to master volume again. So that control is over here. And there you can see that going up and down. So depending on which track I have selected, I'm now mapping into a different set of eight quick controls. This was exactly what I wanted. I created all of the configuration using my VST quick control functionality, flexibility, but I'm able to import that into the track quick controls and I get the best of both worlds. Now, just to hammer that point home, you could create any number of MIDI tracks communicating on different MIDI channels and they're all going to do the same job. So having just created this track on channel three, get the default QCs from plugin and now it's pulled across envelope release, which is the page three quick controls. The VCF envelope release is this yellow slider and there it is going up and down. Let's get some automation recorded to prove that all of that's working. Just engage automation on the instrument track, press play. So with the instrument selected, that's master volume, that's page one, VST data, select channel two. And now I'm inputting, uh, I'm recording high pass filter cutoff. Can you see that the information's being recorded on the instrument track? This MIDI track is routing obviously into the instrument track. Select track three, which is untitled, but communicating on channel three. And there's the VCF envelope release being written. So I've got all of my nicely labeled track quick controls. I can independently select any of these tracks and all of the automation gets routed to the instrument track. Everything works. We're gonna switch over to having a look at the world from the perspective of VST quick controls in a moment. Just before we do, let's have a quick look at some options by right clicking on the quick controls menu. You have this option called show quick controls as combined destination and value. That's a space saver. So the title and the value are all represented on a single line. If you don't like that, you can split into separate destination and value. And now that I'm looking at it again, I'm kind of nostalgic. This is how it used to be. And I think I'll leave it like that for the time being. We also have the ability to save presets, but this is pretty ugly functionality, very, very old um, interface here. So if you head into the presets menu, you can save your preset. If you do so, it'll ask you to give it a name. So you might say CS80, say okay. It's just basically saved those eight track quick controls. It's really not very useful because it's so inflexible. This is exactly that set of commands and nothing else. So if I throw them away and bring them back again, you can see that it will load up exactly those eight presets, regardless of what MIDI track, uh, MIDI channel we're communicating on. So if I jump over 
to track three, which has got some different controls and select my CS80 again. It's gonna load the controls from page two. The difficulty with this preset manager is basically just one big linear list. You can't manage them. You can't do anything with them. Once you've created too many instruments to fit on your pick list, they start scrolling off the screen and the whole thing is completely unusable. So if you have a very small number of instruments and you wanna be able to access them instantly, sure. But no, not for me, that one. Okay, so that's the world from the perspective of track quick controls. Now, let's abandon track quick controls completely and try to do the entire job using VST quick controls. I'm just going to clean up my system a little bit. I'll get rid of this extra MIDI track that we don't need. I'll delete all of the automation that I've written and we're back to a clean interface. Okay, let's say we don't want to use track quick controls at all. The best way to go about it is to use focus quick controls instead. Now in my basic guide to MIDI remote, which I'll put links to everywhere where you need to see them, I talked about the fact that I create track quick controls and I use relative offsets for all of the controls. So I've basically configured a set of eight focus controls as well. If I open the mapping editor, these lower controls, focus QC, which is right at the very top of the pick list. So Cubase is kind of advertising this as the latest hotness. If you're using the MIDI remote editor, focus quick controls get quite, a, get quite the promotion because they're at the top of this pick list. The beauty of focus quick controls is that any plugin that's currently selected can be given focus and we can access the quick controls from there. Just before I demo it, I'll show you one other option that you're going to want to set. In the primary interface in the main MIDI remote screen, in the quick control focus section, we have this button called quick control focus setup. Click that and you basically want to give everything the capability to take focus, both tracks and plugins. That's the way I have my system configured. And with that said, let's demonstrate it. So if I open the CS80, this little blue box, this little blue square on the right hand side says that the CS80 now has focus. We can then open the VST quick control section, show or hide VST quick controls. And now we can see what are we looking at? HPF cutoff. Let's have a look at the main instrument. HPF cutoff. Let's switch to page three. So this now says release long and this says release long. So if I get the song playing again and begin moving this control on my keyboard, this is the focus quick control taking over now, not track quick control. Switch to page two. Oh well, my, my failure will turn into your success. When I selected page two here, I lost window focus the moment I clicked in the main interface. So when I turned the control on my keyboard expecting to write automation, I failed. What I was supposed to do is to lock the control focus. And now the plugin will retain focus even when I move away. So there's master volume, which is on page one. And we haven't written any page two automation yet, have we? And there's the high pass filter cut off, just poking out from behind the instrument. So as long as this plugin retains focus, you can switch pages as much as you want. And you're right, that's an on-off command there being instructed, being sent. Remember earlier when I said there's a very tight uh, relationship between the automation uh, and the, the quick control. If you have a look at these interface controls across the top, you can see that you've got different symbols for whether or not this is a mode, an on-off mode control that I'm toggling here at the moment, which is a different command than controller number four, which is variable. That's LFO one speed I'm varying there. So Cubase has a very good understanding of what's going on. That's all written into the automation protocol. So this is a great way to work if you're happy to have the instruments open when you're recording. You're gonna see the eight controls that you have access to. It's very disappointing that you can't access the page numbers from inside this little interface at the top. I've got no idea why Steinberg have done that because it means that you have to have this right-hand panel open. This is the only way that you can change page numbers. 
So I really wish they would add page functionality to this very nice top section, which actually reinvigorated VST Quick Controls. I've basically written them off, but I am currently giving them another chance because this top level information embedded inside the instrument is a very nice um, interface. And it's quite easy to present an argument to say, this is a better way of looking at the controls than the track quick controls, because you don't have to go through that clunk of creating your MIDI track and getting the default QCs, you know, dragging them across page one page at a time. Everything is very easily accessible. Just before we finish today, I'll present one other option for you to consider. And it's something that I'm actually personally considering at the moment. And that is to abandon the need for dedicated selected track controls. You can actually accomplish that functionality using quick controls alone. If you want to go this route, it's basically identical functionality. Heading back into the quick control focus window, if you select track focus only and then assign your eight controls to be focus quick controls, you're effectively accomplishing exactly the same goal. Because when you're using track quick controls, you do need to retain that focus anyway. You have to ensure that the track is explicitly selected. And so using the focus QC methodology, if you just want to use track controls all on their own, you do actually have that option from inside the focus setup window. So that might be an option for you to consider as well. Options are always good. Hope I've uh, given you some food for thought there. Please hit like if you enjoyed the video uh, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.